It's no secret that the gig economy is one of the best ways to grow your wealth relatively quickly. For example, for me personally, I went from making about $1,000 per month three years ago to making about $25,000 per month today in 2022. This is all due to the fact that I leveraged the gig economy to create multiple streams of income that allowed for me to more than 20X my income in just a matter of a few years. But did you know that the gig economy does a whole lot more than just grow your personal wealth quickly? In fact, there are a lot of experts that believe that the gig economy could be having some really massive effects on the economy as a whole. And so in this video, we're going to be diving into just that. And I'm going to be breaking this down into a bit more detail. So let's get started. Now, the entire idea of the gig economy is having some sort of revenue stream outside of your traditional nine to five. And whenever we're talking about the gig economy, oftentimes these are through either contract jobs or per project jobs. So for example, you could have a traditional job that you go to Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That is your traditional W2 job. That is something that is not part of the gig economy, but you could also do freelancing on Fiverr or Upwork at night or on the weekends. And that is something that would be considered part of the gig economy because that is your side gig or your side hustle. Or alternatively, you could be somebody like me who relies 100% of your income on the gig economy. For me personally, I don't have a nine to five job. Instead, I have multiple side gigs that make up 100% of my revenue. For me specifically, that includes content creation, Turo, as well as consulting. And over the years, the gig economy has absolutely caught fire and it's truly changed the way that workers work and how companies hire. For for example, a survey found that 34% of US workers have some sort of side gig today in 2022. And a different study found that more than half of US companies have increased their hiring of gig workers in the last five years. So of course, with the mainstream adoption of the gig economy, it's changed the way that people have worked, it's changed the way that people hire, but in recent studies, economists have also found that it's probably having a pretty substantial impact on the economy as a whole as well. So let me explain. Now, one metric that economists use to gauge the health of the US economy is something known as the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve states that inflation and unemployment have an inverse relationship. Higher inflation is associated with lower unemployment and vice versa. The Phillips curve has been a concept that's been used to guide macroeconomic policy for decades. And one of the important roles of the Phillips curve is it's actually one of the key metrics that the Federal Reserve uses whenever dictating interest rates. So the Fed will use the Phillips curve as one of the metrics in deciding whether to raise or lower interest rates, which of course has a substantial impact on the everyday consumer and the everyday worker. And one of the big problems here is that in recent years, the Phillips curve has been proven to become more and more inaccurate. And though there are a lot of different reasons as to why these inaccuracies are taking place, one key reason is believed to be because of the gig economy. In fact, this exact theory was called into question by a study conducted by John V. Duca, and his study was called, Does the Gig Economy Affect the Phillips Curve? In this study, it found that there has been a substantial increase in the number of workers in the gig economy, so either people considering themselves to be contract workers or alternatively self-employed individuals. And whenever we look at this from an economical standpoint, this could actually be considered a double-edged sword. Because though the gig economy can be a great way to increase your personal wealth and your personal income, it's also shown in some cases to actually decrease the amount of money that a worker earns. This is because of the fact that gig workers have less bargaining power than traditional W-2 employees, and gig work has really allowed for companies to hire the same person at a lower cost. For example, if you hire a graphic designer, you may have to pay that graphic designer a $60,000, $70,000 per year salary if they're working with you full time, but you could alternatively instead hire a gig worker in the graphic design field and you could pay them maybe $1,000 per month to do work for you. This is, of course, significantly more cost effective for the company to do, but it can in some cases result in lower earned wages by the person completing the work. And the fact that gig workers have less bargaining power and thus they earn less wages, at least statistically speaking, this is really throwing a wrench in the economic data that the government relies on whenever forming economic policy. And this study by John V. Duca goes on to say that there are a lot of workers throughout the United States that identify themselves as gig workers, and thus they are not reporting themselves as unemployed. But because of the fact that they aren't earning a lot of money and they're being underpaid for the work that they're completing, they really should be reporting themselves as unemployed. But because of the fact that they're reporting themselves as either contract workers or self-employed individuals, this is throwing off economic data. 
And later on in this study, it states that economists have long argued about just how much of an impact the gig economy has had on persistently low wages in the US and the change in the relationship between unemployment and inflation. Typically, as unemployment falls, inflation rises. But that trend has been undermined in recent years, leading many to question the long-held economic principle of the Phillips curve. Basically, what this study, as well as some other studies that I looked into that I will link down in the description below, it's showing that the gig economy is really causing economists to second guess a lot of the data that we've been relying on for the last few decades. People are reporting themselves as self-employed or contract workers whenever that may not actually be the case. People are earning less money because they are doing the gig economy on a part-time basis rather than being a W-2 worker. And ultimately what economists typically look for, inflation and unemployment, these two figures are not correlated like they once were, which is going to have a pretty big impact on the economy as a whole. Basically what this study is bringing to the surface here is kind of the dark side of the gig economy. The fact is depending on how you work the gig economy, you can absolutely 10x your income. There are so many different case studies, so many different accounts of people doing just this, whether it be through platforms like Uber and Lyft, freelancing platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, or peer-to-peer -peer sharing platforms like Turo or Airbnb. But there can be a dark side to the gig economy, and I think that this is what this study is bringing to light. People could be earning less if they're doing contract work rather than W-2 work. This is, of course, one of the effects of not playing the gig economy correctly, and I think that the effects that this is having on the overall U.S. economy is definitely an interesting lens to look at it through. And I think that this study is bringing to light some of the downsides of the gig economy, especially those gig workers that may not be as motivated as some others. I definitely can see the fact that gig workers may be inaccurately reporting themselves as either self-employed or contract workers whenever that may not actually be the case, or alternatively, workers may just be earning lower wages because they're a contract worker rather than a W-2 worker. There are, of course, tons of benefits to the gig economy, but these are definitely downsides that I never really talk about on my channel. And overall, economists believe that this could actually end up having a pretty big impact on the U.S. economy as a whole and how economists analyze the economy for economic policy. Now, as far as my own personal opinion with this study, I do think it's a bit one-sided, and I think it tends to show the dark side of the gig economy without shining any light onto the context of the gig economy, which is incredibly important. With the gig economy, people can have the freedom to work from home, work with their own schedule, work with who they want to, and kind of do what they want. It's the best way to be self-employed without having to start your own company from scratch. And I think that this study leaves all of that context out of the equation. I think it's very important to keep that in mind. But with that being said, I think it's extremely interesting to see how the gig economy has totally caught fire in the last couple of years and how lawmakers and economists are dealing with this change. Because in my opinion, I don't think the gig economy is going away anytime soon. In fact, I think it will continue to grow until it takes up the vast majority of the workforce. But like always, you guys, I would love to hear your thoughts. So if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video.